So, if a non-believer asks you what redemption means, what it needs to be redeemed, we've all got testimonies, haven't we? Heaps of them. Sure, our sin was taken away, but what, what, what else were we set free of? You can say to them, I used to drink, I used to swear, I used to sleep around, I used to steal from my drug habit, but now I don't. I've been redeemed from all of those. Yes, the sin, but also from the aimless activities in my life. There's heaps of them, I've written out about 20, but the Bible's full of those things that were attached to us, that God has set us free from. Guilt, shame, self-hatred, drink, drugs, gambling, swearing, crime, rejection, lying, cursing, stealing, anger, adultery, depression, hatred, murder, revenge, self-centeredness, suicide, bitterness, gossip, slander, sickness. Father, I've just been reminded after watching at Prince Philip's funeral last night that your gospel is for everyone whether it be a king on a throne or uh, the lowliest person here at Corio and I don't know where Prince Philip first heard the news but Lord he had embraced you he had a very strong faith and Lord that governed the way that he lived and the way he impacted nations and so Father it would seem as if it's uh, just a mile away, the faith that he lived out and the faith that we live out here. And yet, Lord, we are all faced with the same challenges of handing over our life to you and living the way you want. And so we pray for um, people around the world who've watched that service last night and heard of Philip's faith and of the Queen's faith, Lord. And they're human beings, the same as we are. The Gospel is the same for them as it is for the people here in Corio. And Lord, that's just such a miracle that your grace extends uh, from the highest position in the land to the lowest position. Your grace is abundant and there for all who call upon you. So we just want to thank you for what we heard last night, Lord. Thank you for this man's life. Thank you for the life of the Queen, who has a very strong faith. And I just thank you, Father, that your grace and your mercy extends from that position, that elevated position, to the lowest position here in Corio. The reward is the same, Lord, that grace and that mercy and that gift of eternal life is the same whether it be to a king or a queen or whether it be to someone just walking the streets. And so we all of us here today are recipients of that grace, Lord. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy that's welcomed us into your kingdom. I was just thinking about all the fatherlessness, all the kids that don't ever see their fathers or who don't even know their fathers. And Lord God, I just thank you that you'll enable us mightily to minister to these people, Lord, and pray for them. They break off all generational iniquity, Lord. And for fatherless, Lord God, that you would call fathers if it's not their real fathers, you want back, Lord, spiritual fathers to minister to the young kids, Lord, who are left with a huge void in their lives, Lord. And I just declare, Lord, your word that she says, I will restore the years the locals have eaten. And I declare that your word that goes forth does not return to your void, but it does accomplish the purposes for which it is sent. And we stand on the truth and power of your word. We thank you, Father. Thanks, Karen. 
Father, we come before you. And Father, we, with Tariah, Tariah has been spoken against negatively by, by others in, in Geelong, uh, and possibly even within Tariah. Father, have been denigrated, laughed at, trodden on. Father, we bind up this negativity in the name of Jesus and cast it out. Hallelujah. And Father, we release Tariah in your fullness, in your glory, in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. I'm just thinking that song, Something Beautiful, Something Good, all my confusion he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful of my life. And we just speak that out over every single person in Korea, that God will make something beautiful out of your lives. He understands all your confusion, all your brokenness or your despair but he's there he's a breath away to touch you and make something beautiful of your life we need to be um, allowing the Lord that opportunity and that time when we're corporately together to really minister to us and um, who felt the Lord ministering to him this morning yeah. that's beautiful isn't it Yes. Yeah, we just need to do it, don't we? And it's amazing corporately. You know, I've sat at Hillsong where 20,000 people have been. The Lord has ministered to me, just me, <laughs> in the midst of 20,000 people. Uh, and He so wants to do that to us. We're going to look at. Um, what time we've got left. It's been a beautiful morning. We're going to keep on uh, what's the word? Keep our focus on our scripture for this year in John 15 16. So hopefully you know it off by heart now. Um, I don't know, you might hate me for still looking at it all the time but this scripture is so good. This is the word of the Lord for a turn 21. They were special in these people and specially chosen to be appointed that we should go and bear fruit and that our fruit should remain. So incredible, not, not something fickle. This is something, something that he wants to bring strength and momentum to that's going to keep on going and going outreach that we've been doing that Angus has been doing it's something God wants to keep going to increase, to build up He wants you and me to bear fruit that remains this is so special not, not just to come here on a Sunday morning that it's vital and as necessary as that is you know some people are, are not going to church now, church is a are really down on their congregational numbers because of COVID and, I don't know, getting used to being at home, I suppose, and thinking that Zoom is a, is a, um, a substitute for being here together. You can't substitute this. You cannot substitute it. The Bible tells us not to. You know, do not forsake the meeting of yourselves together. As some are in the habit of doing, Hebrews tells us. And all the more as you see the day approaching. It says the day, the, the day of the Lord, the, the time of reckoning. And you know, this beautiful verse here um, finishes with that last bit, and we'll get to this bit and really go deeper into it. But that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. He may give you. Have you pondered that bit yet? It's worth pondering. But whatever you ask the Father in my name, that he may give you. Not anything we ask him that makes us feel good. I don't believe that's what it's saying. It's saying whatever is part of my will and purposes, 
Remember, thy kingdom come is the, is the model prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. This is what we're all about. His will to be done. His kingdom to come. That's what we're all about. That's it. When we're in that mode, we ask the Father, whatever we ask the Father, in His name He will give us. Because we've got the Father's heart. We've caught on to what He wants us to do. So bearing fruit, we're going to quickly look. Turn in your Bibles to um, Luke 4. And somebody gets a paper in my Bible. Just need to be delivered from bits of paper in my Bible. Somebody will need to pray for me later on. Could be a long deliverance. <laughs> Luke 4, 18. So we can ask the question, you know, and this is what we need to be doing right now. Have you thought about bearing fruit? Have you thought about it? What's it mean for me? You know, this is, this is what God is wanting us to do right now in the church, is to meditate and focus. Don't, don't listen to things and, and just walk away and go, oh, that was nice. Oh, yeah, the preacher preached a pretty good word today. And then they were off and watch you know, neighbours or whatever we do. You know, we forget about it. It's meditate on the Word of God. The Spirit is calling you and I to, to really focus our minds and our hearts and our spirits on the Word of God now. Give it time. If I get maybe I should put that on my gravestone. Give it time. <laughs> Give it time. Remember, give the Spirit the time He needs to speak to you. The other day I prayed about something and I thought I had the answer straight up. And then just as I thought a little bit more later on, bang, the real, I, I thought, well, that's the real answer, God. Now, the first one was just my knowledge coming up, you know, and something I knew. I got the real answer that I wanted to hear. Give Him time, give Him time. So Luke 4, 18, you might ask the question, where I was thinking about that. What is bearing fruit? What is bearing fruit all about? What does it look like? You know? Because in church we, we're told a lot of spiritual words and use a lot of cliches and verses and things like that. And we, we need to ask questions now and again. What does it mean for me to bear fruit? What does it look like? Okay? And it would look slightly different for every one of us, but the basics are here in what Jesus says here when he quotes from the book of Isaiah. So he's, we're in verse, uh, let's start from verse 16. So he comes to Luke 4. He comes to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And he's, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, stood up and read. You can imagine them all looking as he just grabs it. You know? It'd be like someone standing up and speaking in tongues. Uh, it grabs everybody's attention, doesn't it? You can imagine Jesus up there grabbing everybody's attention. And he found the, the part in the scroll of Isaiah. And he, he, and he says, this is what I was here for. He's quoting, this is what I'm here for. This is what the prophet Isaiah was talking about. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord there's a description of bearing fruit there it is right before you if you wonder what bearing fruit looks like this is it did Jesus mean that only for himself? Did, did he? Didn't mean that that was all he was going to do and that was it. This is passed on to us. This is for us to do. If you're wondering what you meant to do to bear fruit, meditate on this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. First thing, grab hold of that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. You. So often 
we buckle under the lies of the enemy, don't we? That tells us that we, we can't be this or we can't do that. We can't even say that. We can't even do that. So often, you know, the other day, or just recently, I, I sent a text to somebody who, I um, have to be careful here, um, who has walked away from the Lord in a way, you know? Still believes, but walked away. And um, I sort of got connected with them and through someone else. And I, I couldn't help it. I, I had to send them a, a, a text. I'd already talked to them on the phone and that. But I had to send them a text and tell them some really down-the-line home truths, you know, in this text. I felt, Lord, I've just got to do this. It's like, oh, it was in my heart. I've got to do this. So I sent them this text. And I thought, this is you, God. I know this is you. And I, I don't want them to take it as judgment or anything like that. But they need to hear some straight-out stuff. And, you know, I thought, after I do that, they're probably not going to talk to me again. They're probably not going to ring me back. And I hope they don't think that I'm... I'm callous, but in their difficult situation, I knew God was on their case, you know? So I told them, God's on your case. He's trying to get your attention now. And daddy, 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 no, you know? And they put in a couple of hard things in that. <laughs> Lo and behold, I'm sitting there thinking, having a cup of tea outside yesterday, thinking, oh, I probably won't hear from them again. And the phone goes off, and it's them, and I think, oh, golly, oh, <laughs> what am I going to get here, God, you know? <laughs> But you know, I had the, the best half hour phone call with this this person for the next half an hour. I was on the phone, you know, and you know, even though I didn't, I didn't really go fully. I should have even prayed more for them. I should have done more. But it was a great phone call, and I thought, the spirit of God's upon us. The spirit of God's upon you right now. When when you get a little prompting. You know, and I only did this, only did this out of a little prompting. I was in the middle of doing something else, and I thought, I have got to send this to this person. They have got to know what God's doing and what He's expecting of them right now. And you know, I said, Oh, have you got your Bible? And I encouraged them, because the Spirit of the Lord's upon you. It's upon you. Every one of you wants it to use us mightily, doesn't He? He's anointed you because He's anointed me. See the scripture, because He's anointed you. Do you receive the fact that you're anointed to be a fruit? Do you receive that this morning? You might think, how can I be a fruit? You know? Don't. We've, we've got to get over listening to what the enemy's saying to us and what our own thinking is saying to us. Remember, we've talked this year about changing our thinking. Remember? It's hard to remember some elements I know from weeks ago. Changing our thinking. That's, that's what we've been talking about. Change your thinking. You are who you are in God. I, I've even had to make a stand, I think, in this last year about my own self. I think, Lord, you've given me things to do and I've got to really grab hold of who I am and what you've told me to do. And this is what's happening in the church right now. We talk about the church being different. We're going to keep saying it. And this is part of the differences. It's not doing church on Zoom. It's walking in who God's called you to be. You're anointed. You're anointed. doesn't matter how badly you're feeling right now. God can use that for you to bless somebody. Can't he? Sometimes in the pits of our despair or struggles, God uses us because we understand what that person's going through. We totally get what they're feeling. And we can empathize and they know that we're real. So don't worry about what you're feeling right now. Don't let that crush you down. Put it in its place in God's hands and believe that He has anointed you to go. And what does it say we have to do? To preach the gospel to the poor. Preach the gospel to the poor. Now, we're going to preach it to everybody if we get a chance. But what does Jesus say about the poor in spirit? You know, it's the poor in spirit. Yeah. Preach the gospel to the poor, to the ones that are open. Often the most unlikely people. In the most odd circumstances sometimes that God will use you to preach the gospel to the poor. It could just be a quick testimony, couldn't it? 
you know, oh, God helped, has helped me through that situation, or God's helped me with my kids. Look at what he's done, you know. Someone's talking to you and you, you get into a conversation. Whatever God does, he's opening doors for you. That's what he wants to do. Open the doors. Open the doors. We pray that when the team go out. Lord, open the doors. Open the doors in Kariah Village. You just don't know what God's going to do. Do you? Just don't know. I remember, I remember being in a, a place years ago when I was sort of thinking, oh, golly, oh, I've done this and I've preached and done this. And I was having one of those little downers where I'm thinking, has it done any good, you know? And then I, I heard somebody at a table, we're at a dinner. I don't know if you remember this, love. We're at a dinner. And I heard somebody at the table behind me talking about a, a, a meeting that they'd done at Easter. And it was, and it was one that I'd done. <laughs> and I suddenly clicked in and I thought, oh, they didn't even realise it was me or, or anything like that. And, and they're saying, that, that meeting, God just touched me. And I was so moved, you know? <laughs> and I had a lot of difficulty doing that meeting. I won't give you the details. I had a lot of difficulty in being able to, to get that meeting done. And God moved. So you don't know what God's going to do. Do you? He's anointed you to preach gospel to the poor. He sent you to heal the brokenhearted. This is what bearing fruit's all about, isn't it? To heal the brokenhearted. He sent you to heal the brokenhearted. Think about that for a moment. What does that mean for you? Does it mean just that you give someone your time talking to them? Does it mean that God leads you to intercede and pray for them. I love doing that. I love, I love it when I really get serious in prayer about somebody, you know, and my heart begins to cry out to God for a person, for a situation. This person that I, I talked to on the phone and sent the text to, um, their situation, they were so freaking out about their, their family situation what was happening really worried really worried and you know they had to have meetings and stuff and everything just went so different uh, i'd said to them before let's pray you've got to get god involved in this and oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. but god so changed it all around it was amazing they told me on the phone it was so different they the, the difficult person who was part of the meeting even apologised for the way they'd been beforehand. It was such a change. They didn't expect it. Because God was there. God was involved. They're broken hearted, obviously. You know, and there's so many broken hearted around, isn't there? Isn't there? They're everywhere, the broken hearted. God wants to use us to heal the broken hearted. He's anointed us. To minister to the broken heart. Often we're so taken up by our own feelings, aren't we? Our own stuff. We're so, we're so, you know, overwhelmed by our own stuff sometimes. And yet God, in the midst of that, He wants to use us to heal the broken heart. And in fact, can I can I say often when we're in the midst of difficulties, it's the very time to be pressing into God and saying you know, who is it that you want me to touch God because every time I get into those situations, nearly every time God puts someone in my face that I need to share with, that I need to talk to that I need to pray for it's almost the time when we need to be almost so much more vigilant, not just to get out of our own selves but to be ready to be used by God to heal the broken heart. It's hard to do unless we're constantly in the Word every day, constantly asking God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I'm representing you. You know, this week I've been saying to myself, keep reminding myself, how can I represent you? And I'm representing you, Lord Jesus, today. You know? I'm representing you. gives you a whole clear perspective. Oh, what happens here? When someone cuts you off, you know, 
we, we attempted. And they might not hear what you say, but I'm representing you, Jesus. Because you want me to heal the broken heart. You want me to be afraid. To proclaim liberty to the captives is the next line. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Oh, how I wish we could shout it out to the housetops, eh? But Jesus sets us free. They've been doing studies in America. Uh, George Barnum, you would have heard of George Barnum. And it's incredible the results from the studies in the church, I should say, to be clear. Studies across the churches, different Protestant, Pentecostal, everything goes on. And it's absolutely incredible how the church has, in many sections, just wilted down in its beliefs. It really is. It's, it's pretty heartbreaking you know, when, when you look at it. And what's, what's amazing is that they think they're being free. You know, one, one part of the study was that you know, we, we, there's no real great purpose to life, people said. And it's just Christians in mainline Protestant churches. Um, but we should, we should just be looking to God to help us to live a way that will give us pleasure and satisfaction and all that sort of stuff. It was so hedonistic, you know, that you just couldn't believe it. That's, that's what they were looking at. There was no, no thought about, about this. There was no thought about proclaiming liberty to others. It was all about self and how they could be successful. It was a big long blur, but I can't say it word for word, but it was so self-focused. It was incredible. It really was. It's so sad to see. And this was like, I think it was 50 something percent. Somewhere around half of Christians thought this way. It was amazing. Hardly any were really believing in the absolute truth of the Bible. Many, many weren't believing in the absolute truth of the Bible. The crazy thing is that they think they're walking in some sort of freedom, but they're actually, they're actually putting themselves into bondage to the world and the enemy, aren't they? That's what they're doing. Liberty to the captives. You know, we need to proclaim liberty to the captives. We need to proclaim liberty to, to the captives. And, and one thing that's been on my heart this week, and um, I just wanted to share it with you, and it probably doesn't apply to any of you, but I, I really just want to share it, because you might know somebody that's like it. And the thing that's been on my heart this week is that there's so many still within the church that are in captivity. So many in the church that are still captive. And by that I mean there's so many in the church, I think, that aren't saved. That aren't really saved. It's a tragedy. An absolute tragedy. If we were gonna, you know, I was gonna have the heading up today, obstacles to bearing fruit. And one of the biggest obstacles to bearing fruit is the fact that many within the church don't follow what we're looking at today in Luke 4. But they also, they're not really saved. And it's a sad, sad tragedy. Some have prayed a prayer. Many young people at big youth conferences, they pray, they pray a prayer and in the emotion of the moment and the peer pressure of everyone around, we know the story, don't we? They, they just say it. And you hope that some... They say probably less than 5% actually get converted in that situation. But what's the tragedy is that they may go away and think that they're right with God. Isn't that the tragedy? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think in the church in the coming days, we are going to see preached this whole thing. Are you really saved? Are you really saved? Not to try and worry or condemn people. You know, I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell you again because it just illustrates it so perfectly. I had a man that I was ministering to from way down Hollow Bay area, 
and he came to me and you know he had issues and his own issues and his own stuff he was a deacon in the church I think um, it's a long time ago and uh, he just couldn't get through these situations that were, were bugging him and his wife and all the rest of it and I think it was four times I, I sat and prayed with him and he drove all the way up from Apollo Bay and I thought, wow, that's great, he's keen and he's open, but it was just like nothing was happening, just nothing. And I thought, why is nothing happening, God, you know? If I ever lost my gift or something, you know, you, know, you think of yourself, eh? And one day, he, the, the, about the fifth time, he came along, and I had this thought during the week, um, I wonder if this man's saved. He's a deacon in the church. And I said to him, I asked him a few questions about his background. I said, you know, Went to church. Oh, we brought up in church. Always in church. Love church. Always there, on the board, doing this, doing that. I said, "When did you, when did you get saved?" Oh, oh, you know, always been saved. I said, "No." no. I said, "When did you ask Christ to come into your life? When did you give your life over to Him and ask Him to come into your heart, be your Lord?" You know, because. Salvation is the great exchange, isn't it? It's his life for ours. It's, that's what it is. It's righteousness for our righteousness. I said, when did you do that? So I don't, I don't remember ever doing that. So I said, why don't we do it now? And he said, a little hesitant, but he said, oh, no, no, okay, yeah, let's do it. So I, I gave him some words to, to say, and I sat and waited. He couldn't speak. He was dumb could not get the words out to ask Christ into his heart. And so we prayed over some blockages in his life that, you know, the enemy had obviously put in there. Really, the spirit of religion in a lot of ways. And I'm not sure if he was sprinkled or, or whatever when he was young, but we prayed over some things. And then he was able to get the words out. And man, oh man, look, you know, if you, if you could have been in that room, I, I reckon the room glowed because uh, I, I cracked up, I couldn't, I couldn't talk. The anointing of the Spirit just filled this room. And he couldn't talk for the right reasons this time. You know? and, and he was saved. He was gloriously saved. His wife rang me two or three years later and said, thank you so much. She said, my husband's never been the same man since. God is so good, isn't he? I think there's so many in the church. You know, and if you haven't done it, I'm sure you all have, but if you've never, never willfully asked Christ to come into your heart, to be your Lord. See, it's about the King. We're not talking about some figure, are we, in history. We're talking about the King of all creation, the Lord of all lords, to ask Him into our hearts, to... To, to give him his give us his life and for us to live for him. It's so important. And and I hope you might you might know people like that. And just even today it might get you to pray for people that you know. If you don't think you're in that category, and I'm sure you're not, but you know, it might give you the impetus to to pray for others since you know. Because this is a huge thing within the church right now. The other, the other huge thing is, and we, we might do it later on, the other huge thing is is being baptised in the Spirit is the other massive thing that would inhibit us from bearing fruit. What is it in your heart? Is, is there anything in your heart that's holding you back from bearing fruit? It doesn't have to be a wicked thing. It can be just plain old fear. It could be just that you don't like change, you know, you struggle with change. Whatever it is, what is it that might get in the road of bearing fruit for the Lord right now? Are you bashful to talk to people? Shy? You need boldness? Ask God for boldness today. You need fresh boldness? You're not sure about the scriptures if you're going to say something to somebody? 
like I had to with this person I mentioned? What is it? Is there anything there that's holding you back from there and forth? Because God's anointed us. Look at the word and meditate on it. He's anointed you to bear fruit. And if it's not happening, there's something there that He wants to take out of you and get out of the road, doesn't He? The obstacles to bearing fruit. He wants you to give recovery of sight to the blind. <coughs> What's that? Hope it's physical. That'd be great if you could pray for someone and they get their sight. Could be spiritual sight, couldn't it? To the blind. He wants you to do that. Bearing fruit. Go home and look at this. Meditate on the Word of God. Set at liberty those who are oppressed. That's what He wants you to do. He's anointed you to do that. Are you receiving that today? We have to receive it, don't we? We can know it and recite it off. We have to receive it. We have to say, yes, yes. That's what you want me to do. It's not for the grand poo bars up on the stage and the great mega personalities and the mega churches. It's for you and me. Set at liberty those who are oppressed. What does that mean? Within your gifting and grace, God will show you how to do that. If you ask Him, if you give Him time, if you let Him speak to you, and you take hold of His Word, isn't His Word wonderful? We'll do the rest some other time. Let's pray. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Just want to give you a moment, just in case that you have never willfully, openly, in front of people even, <laughs> asked Christ into your heart as your Lord. Not just say, Lord, forgive me my sin. Lord, come into my heart and be my Lord, be my Saviour, my Redeemer, as Stafka talked about today. Be my Redeemer. I want to live for you. I want to encourage you today, if you've never done that, to do it. And especially to do it right now, if you feel the Spirit of God touching your heart. Do it right now. Right now. Do it, do it with somebody. You can come out the front right now. If there is someone here, you can come out the front right now. But do it right now. Make sure that your heart is in the right place with God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to us. Thank you for ministering to us today. Thank you for giving us the power, Lord, to receive your word about what we're called and anointed to do to bear fruit. Get the blockages out the road, Lord. Get our own plans out the road. Get our own obstinance out the road, Lord. Get our fears out the road, Lord. It would stop us bearing fruit. And empower us with your spirit afresh today. Empower us with your spirit. If you want that today, if that's what your heart needs and wants today, and maybe you'll we'll put your hands out in front of you. We're going to spend the last 30 seconds just saying, Lord, fill me afresh today so that I can bear fruit. Get the obstacles out the way so that I can bear much fruit at my last. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, you're going to do it. If, you, if you're keen, you're eager, fill the fresh with the Spirit. So Lord, our hands are out. We're, we're looking to you as we finish now. We say, Lord, fill us afresh once again. Pour your spirit in us. With fresh faith, fresh boldness. Full of your word. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Spirit. Believe it and receive it this morning. Believe it and receive it. doing it for you. Thank you. 
Fill us with the fire, Lord. Baptized in the Spirit and with fire. It's John the Baptist. Thank you, Jesus. We receive. We receive. You're wonderful. You're almighty, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Wash the world of us. Wash the world of us. Jesus, wonderful. Thank you. Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.